assessment. How many executive ladder members did release this in November of last year? We released it right immediately ahead of time to our nonprofit housing organizations because the topic is just of such importance to them. We now met with all the municipalities, well, we met with the five the groups, the regional discussions about of the municipalities, encouraging them to take this up you know, and understand it. We've now gone out to a bunch of other groups now, so you guys are, are one of those groups that we're trying to get to. When we took this to Westchester County Association last week, and Tim was there in the room for the presentation, one of the first questions we got asked was, how many units does each municipality have to do? Because I want to help them get there. Well, that's, the municipalities have a totally different take on that. You know, so, so again, it is not a allocation plan. Every municipality does not get told how many units they need to get to. It is an assessment of their needs. And unlike previous, this is the third time we've done a housing needs assessment in Westchester. We did one back in the early 90s, Rutgers University did it, we did one in 2004. And that one in 2004 really took us through 2015, what the need was, all right? But the difference between those and this one was the those were a countywide study. It was a countywide need, it was a countywide number. It didn't tell each municipality what their issues were. This report is very, very different. This one is so data-driven. There is data in here, including in the appendix. There's, the, the whole document is 644, 640 pages. Included in the appendix is a seven-page analysis of each municipality of their data. Okay, so that Mamarinic can't say, well, that's the countywide number, it's not mine. There are numbers in there their affordability, their income levels. And so it takes every topic, and it goes um, by the existing housing stock, it goes by demographics, it goes by um, income of, of, and affordability. So it goes to all special needs populations, it covers a whole host of different topics. By the way, um, Tim has this presentation, so he would have the ability to get it out to anybody who's interested in it. All right, so don't necessarily worry about taking pictures of the, of the screen if you, don't, if you really want the whole presentation. You're welcome to it. So if you don't mind, move, let's move on. So let's start with the fact that, as I already said, I'm going to tie this to the census. You know I'm going to be prepared for that. So Westchester is home to almost a million people, 975 there, thereabouts. Go ahead. We like to start with this quote because we did ask a couple people out in the field, out in the Westchester field, about why is this take, undertaking this study important? And Bill Cuddy, we truly think, had, came up with one of the best quotes for us. And so Westchester's long and short-term economic viability is predicated upon our housing inventory meeting the demands of our workforce. You will see I will tie this to workforce and to jobs multiple times, okay? The county executive's report demonstrates our dereliction in delivering adequate, accessible, and affordable housing. It's a call to action. If we don't address the miscarriage of our policies and perspectives, we fail our families and workers. The problem may be intractable, but it isn't insurmountable. Let's start right with the economics here. More people commute in to work in Westchester than the people who live and work here. Okay, 199,000 people are commuting, are clogging our highways, are filling up the trains and the buses to get to work, to get to the jobs, here in the county. Many of them have to do that because they can't afford to live in Westchester. All right? Almost as many people are commuting out. But you know what? Westchester was built as a community. We, we've grown, we grew from New York City North and from the Hudson River East. So we've, we were always a bedroom community for New York City. So that number doesn't surprise us. But the number that there's almost as many people commuting into Westchester as commuting out, that was a surprise. 90,000 people live in poverty in this county. Now, this, was, this report is done right after the, the last recession was, so we have a lot of people who truly, truly never, ever thought they were gonna have lost their job, and did in, in the last recession. So that number grew from 2000 to 2017, almost 14%. So we're gonna go into some housing statistics. <coughs> So there's a number, 345,885 housing units, as I said before. We know there's a lot more than that, but we have to go with the official statistics that are out there. 81% of our housing stock was built before 1979, was built before lead-based paint was banned. That's an important number for us because it actually supported the county's application for a $4.1 million grant to HUD to control lead-based paint. 
We still have a lot of lead-based pain in this county. We have a lot of children with elevated blood levels because they live in that housing that has lead-based pain. All right, just to give you some sense of the size difference, Village of Buchanan has the smallest with the 864 units. It's so under, you know, the, the size difference is so huge between that and the city of Yonkers with over 82,000 housing units. This was a surprise. Westchester, many think, people think of Westchester as, a, as the bedroom is the home ownership community. You move out of New York City because you want to own your home, go to the big schools. We are below the national average for home ownership. I am right below. I get that. But we are below the national average. And, and the averages, by the way, are a high uh, in New, the town of Newcastle. And again, this is why I say the data is out there for every municipality. There's a high in Newcastle where 92% of the people who, who live in Newcastle own their home, to a low of only 35% in the village of Sleepy Hollow. All right? So the data is in there for each of the different municipalities. So again, because we're below the national average for ownership, we're above, just slightly above. It's always important for us to have a conversation about affordable housing to also include subsidized housing. Um, and so just to get an update, we are losing public housing units. Many of them have been converted over the years, but we are now down to fewer than 2,500 public housing units in this county. All right, those are the housing units that were built for the poorest of the poor because they, they could literally live in there even with no income and, and the government was subsidizing. Section 8, those numbers have not grown. Sequestration has not helped us. Uh, the federal budgets and the, and the lack of extra funding put in the budgets. But for the first time, we have ETPA data. We now know that there are 34,000 ETPA, or Emergency Tenant Protection Act units in this county in 1,700 buildings. All right. We start to get into the issues of our housing. So we have 4,500 units that are severely overcrowded. That means more than one and a half persons per room, not per bedroom, per room. Okay? We have 2,500 substandard units. That means they don't, have work, they don't have working kitchens and baths. But the biggest number by far is we have 72,000 households who are severely cost burdened. That means that they are paying more than 50% of their income toward their rent. If I look at how many households are paying more than 30% of their income toward their rent, that number jumps. That number is over 140,000 people or households when we start talking about the um, oh, paying more than 30% of their income toward their rent. This is a new picture. We've never really had to worry about foreclosures before, but since 2008, foreclosures have hit this county hard, particularly in northern Westchester. Now, many people will say, well, wait, the most number of foreclosures was in the city of Yonkers. And you're absolutely right. Over 1,700 units have been foreclosed upon in the city of Yonkers. But when I look at the number of foreclosures in the community as a percentage of their total housing units, we tell an entirely different story. Only 2% of uh, Yonkers' housing units have been foreclosed upon. But look how it has affected northern Westchester. We still have the city of Mount Vernon in there. But Peekskill, almost 5% of the housing units in Peekskill have been foreclosed upon. And then Yorktown, Cortland, Lewisboro, and North Salem have all been so significantly hit by foreclosures. And they're still recovering because many, New York has the longest process for foreclosures, 444 days. So there are many units where the banks haven't taken it over yet, nobody's living there, and the local municipalities are dealing with that. Well, what do you want us to get from that? <laughs> I'm, I'm, hold on, hold on to it. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. Don't worry, I'm, right now I'm giving you data. I'm going to get to what's, what we're doing about this. Because the county has taken its first steps already, okay? So let's talk about housing affordability. And again, this is the at the time that the report was done, housing afford a single family house, the median sale price for a single family house was $650,000. About two weeks ago, maybe two and a half weeks ago, a report came out that the median sale price is now 699000 All right, so the picture's gotten even worse because income limits haven't gone up. To be able to only just put the 5% down and cover your closing costs, you need $71,500 to be able to afford that house at $650,000, which means that to cover the balance of the purchase price with your mortgage, you need an annual income of $235,000. When we talk about a family of four and affordable and what they're earning, 
At 80% of the median income, that family of four only earns $93,650. Even at 100% of AMI, of area median income, they earn $117,000. There's a gap at 80% of almost $400,000 of that household of four being able to afford the median sale price in Westchester. Again, every municipality has different numbers. The numbers are in the report. So you can see the median sale price in Yonkers, and you can see it in Portchester, and you can see it in every town and city and village in this municipality. So it's not, that, but I'm giving you the countywide numbers to be able to help you understand. And so let's talk about renters. The median renter, because renters make generally, hold that thought, the renters generally have lower incomes. The median renter's income is 36690 the two-bedroom fair market rent, which is only set at 40% of the, of the average rents. The two-bedroom FRMR is 1687. But when that family earning $36,000 and $36,690, suspending only 30% of their income toward their rent over the course of 12 months, they only have $917 a month to pay their rent. There's a gap to even just be able to afford the 40% rent level of $770 a month. But there are three, the good news is, there are three communities in Westchester where the renters' incomes do make the, and the rent, the cost of housing, the rent, cost of rental housing in those communities is in fact affordable. Bronxville, Newcastle, and Palm Manor, all very high income areas, so the renters' incomes are very high in those communities, which is why they can afford the income. So our conclusions, and we're going to get to where we're going from here. So the, great, the total gross need for affordable housing is 82,000 units. Now, if I just left it at that, you'd all just walk out of the door, put your heads down, and just say, well, we're done. We can't, there's nothing we can do. But that's not. Many of these people are, in fact, living in decent, safe, and sanitary housing. They're just not up being able to afford where they are living. All right, so there's no question that the greatest need is for rental assistance or some subsidy to be able to cover their costs. We have many seniors who are house rich but income poor. They're paying more than 50% of their income toward their housing costs, but they own their house. All right, so, but we've also demonstrated that there's a need for rent, for housing rehabilitation, there's a need for foreclosure counseling and eviction prevention. So when we actually boiled it down to, okay, but what's the need for new housing units, new affordable housing units? We actually take that number, the 82,000, and we get down to 11,700. And that's based on three factors. Number one is those 4,500 severely overcrowded households, because in, in that fact, in that situation, you've got too many people living in that housing unit. Very clearly, you would need to create another housing unit to take the burden off that housing unit. We also, at the time of the study was done, had 846 homeless families. They have no home. It's not decent, safe, and sanitary. They have no home at all. We need to make sure we're accounting for our homeless population. And then the last part of this, is the 6,300 families who have registered on the county's Home Seeker website. That's the county's affordable housing website where we ask and collect information from people who are actively looking for affordable housing in Westchester County. We right now have over 18,000 families have signed up looking for affordable housing in Westchester County. But some of them already live in Westchester, so they're counted in the other number, that rent assistance number, okay? But 6,300 of them at the time that the sense that this report was done told us they were not living in Westchester. In fact, many of them may likely be some of those 199,000 people that are commuting into Westchester. They can't afford to live here, but they might be working here. All right, so, that's, so those three numbers get us to the 11,700 need. Now, I'm actually going to jump for a little bit and talk about a New York City report that came out, the geography of jobs, because the link is indisputable that without housing, we are not getting jobs, okay? Um, and so, in 2018, the New York City Regional Planning Office came out with the geography of jobs report. You're going to see in a second why this is so important. Clearly, there is a link between housing and jobs. And housing, production of housing in, in Westchester and in the entire Hudson Valley has slowed down and we are not keeping up with the region. Okay, if you don't mind, jump, jump to the next slide and then we're going to have to go back. Between 2010 and 2017, the entire Hudson Valley only issued 25,000 building permits. The entire Hudson Valley. And if you know the area and all that, there's a lot of dots up along the I-84 corridor. Okay, so Orange County, Dutchess County, they've issued a lot of building permits, okay? Now, 
In that same time period, northern New Jersey has issued 151,000 building permits. And it's not even easy access to get into New York City from northern New Jersey, okay? But in the same time period where we issued 25,000, they issued 151,000. And New York City has blown us all away by, they've issued 164,000 building permits. So what does that mean? If you don't mind, go back to the slide. Thank you. What it means is New York City is certainly keeping ahead of our job growth. We know New, Northern New Jersey, New Jersey doesn't have seeker. Don't, let's, we're not going to start on that discussion, but we know that obviously that's an issue. It makes it easier to build housing in New Jersey because they don't have seeker. But what it means is our workforce is aging. And in fact, the housing needs assessment tells you that every municipality in Westchester lost between the population of those who are 30 to 44. We lost our younger workforce. And if we don't turn this around, we're going to find ourselves really, really in dire straits. Because our over 85 population has grown tremendously. Some municipalities saw growth of over 200% of their population of over 85. Okay? That's, again, the data's in the report. I'm just tying it all together for you. And so what's it doing? There's, I come down to the Taconic Parkway. There's a lot of people on that Taconic Parkway with me. All right, not, not how quiet it was 30 years ago or 30 plus years ago when I started commuting up north. There's a lot of people putting a strain on our transit system, our highways, our roadways, um, our trains, our buses, public transportation because of the fact that they have to commute further. So now if you can go, thank you. Bottom line is the need is all over Westchester. There is not a single municipality that had a good report except for those three that had, rent that had affordable rentals in their communities with their renters, all right? But every other category, there's, there's, there's data in there. Um, and that tells us, again, the need is all over Westchester. So what are we doing about it? Getting to your point in hand. So moving forward, so in 2020, the county executive has said, we've got to do something. And so he put over $20 million into this year's budget to be able to start addressing things. Um, first and foremost, we put $35,000 into education and training to train people. We want to get more homeowners. We're below the national average. So, but understand something. With the last foreclosure, this is why I'm tying it together again. Foreclosures are people, the people who have been foreclosed upon may not now have the credit to be able to buy that new home yet. And so in reality, they're putting an extra strain on our rental market because they're renting units because they can't afford, they don't have the credit to buy. But they might have more income so they can pay higher rents. Okay, so there's an extra strain on our rental system right now because of that. So we gotta get more people back into the world of home ownership because not, not for nothing, but one day all of you are gonna wanna sell your homes. And we have to make sure that there is a, you know, the housing market can actually handle that. So we're putting $300,000 toward housing stabilization, housing stabilization, sorry, I'm talking too fast. That's eviction prevention and foreclosure counseling. Because again, we don't want to keep the system going with foreclosures. There are still thousands of units in the system right now in Westchester that are still being subject to foreclosure. They're just in the process, okay? Um, and then employer assistance. We're, going to, we're kicking off a new program this year where we're going to start working with employers to see how can we meet their employees' needs to encourage people to move to Westchester, whether it's providing down payment assistance or helping them in some other way. We're gonna work with specific employers who have indicated a willingness to put their own money forward to be able to work with us to, to meet their needs of their employees. So the county executive has also put $10 million in our new home plan program. Some of our developers here have used that program. That's where the county buys the land for an affordable housing development and sells it to the developer for $1. So we have effectively taken the cost of land out of the development budget because the county will pay it for you. All right. We all, he's also set aside $10 million um, in our housing implementation fund. This is an infrastructure fund where the funds go to the local municipality to help them provide other infrastructure related to providing the affordable housing. And then we put $500,000 aside for pre-development and feasibility because there are many municipalities that don't know how to take the first step because they don't have any of their own money set aside where they might say, you know what, there's a parking lot over there. Why can't we consider that for affordable housing, build over the parking lot, but they don't know how to start. And so by putting aside some money for feasibility, we can help some of those municipalities with that process. All right, so then we go to land and, and zoning initiatives. There are essentially two different things that we're working on. Number one is we now have an up-to-date database because, because not only do the municipalities want to know what do we already have, 
particularly when new, new municipalities or new uh, supervisors or mayor come on board, they want to know what's there already. But many people want to know where can I find it, where can I apply for affordable housing. And then, whoop, one more go back. So, and then the last is we're working with municipalities. Many municipalities in Westchester here are still so small that they don't have professional planners. They have the planners who help you for work on their planning boards and zoning board issues, but they don't have professional planning staff who can help them with their zoning ordinance. So we've started creating model ordinances so the municipalities can just adopt this, put it in their code, and it, it becomes another opportunity to create more affordable housing opportunities, not necessarily deep restricted. But so the first one that we rolled out last year was model was accessory dwelling units. I, my, I told you all four of my children have now moved out of my house. My four bedroom house, I could actually create a rental unit in there. Of course, I would do it legally, but you know, my husband wouldn't, that aside. Believe me, that's a, you know. So anyway, um, so model is actually only, only right now, I think 14 or 17 municipalities allow accessory dwelling units. Okay, not all of them do because they don't have somebody to help them write them. We've written the model ordinance for them. They can adopt wholesale, they can take the provisions that work for their municipality. So we are encouraging more municipalities to, in fact, adopt and provide accessory apartments. All right, next we're working on senior housing. Can I tell you that in 12 municipalities, we found 15 different senior housing ordinances in this county? In 12. So there are a couple municipalities that have multiple senior housing ordinances. Again, that's really confusing, so we're just going to give them, we're going to put them all out there. We're going to give them a model ordinance about parking requirements, because there are, in fact, we in certain places where the parking requirement is just too high, and as we all know, parking drives generally how many units you get. It's not always just the height of the building, it's really how many parking spaces can you provide on the ground. So, and then the last one that we're going to, we know we're going to be working on is, um, uh, we've done in 2004, 2005, a study about office park housing, and adopted, so we want to be able to expand that now and take a look at a lot of our old campus housing that's sitting vacant right now, how we, how we might be able to build more housing in with uh, uh, mixed commercial use, and the adaptive reuse of other buildings. Uh, I am done. I have a so, yeah. so obviously there's a lot more in this report, but I'm just giving you the highlights. Yes. This is this is just a suggestion. I noticed when I used to live in the city and now I live up here. And you were talking about the building in Manhattan as well as a compared to Westchester County. Have you applied for a permit, a building permit, in New York City or in Westchester County? I don't want to kill the people in Westchester County. <laughs> specifically in your show. I mean, I can't tell you how easy it is to get one in New York City and to get the work done correctly. Up here, it's like pulling teeth. I mean, oh, yeah. it's not streamlined. I even went in there and said, just tell us how much you want. We'll write you a check. And then there's no pamphlet on saying, you know, requirements. They don't want to talk to you. And it's not just New Rochelle. I know it's Mount Vernon. I know it's Harrison. I know it's, it's all over the It's town. a nightmare. It's and a nightmare. honestly, we have 43 systems in 43 municipalities because every municipality controls their own zoning and their own land use. So we know there are 43. That's the problem. You want more we, we know. We know. <laughs> Which is why, again, we're trying to help them by streamlining some of their ordinances. Okay. Talk about foreclosure. We'll get you to the point where we're going to Mr. Taros now. Welcome. Uh, you have uh, foreclosures. Mount Vernon has one of the higher foreclosure rates. The problem is the seniors there can't afford the taxes. So you cannot solve anything. And they're going to jump 7% higher with the new mayor coming in, which means more seniors are going to live, leave the town. Uh, what what the, the previous mayor called him, uh, uh, what was the, the term he used for the empty house? Zombie homes. homes. You have more zombie homes. Okay, in Mount Vernon. Why? A, a little nothing house, 15, 20,000 in taxes. So government is the problem. Government is not the solution, clearly. And all these statistics are very interesting. But they don't go anywhere unless you can solve the problem. And that's what I don't see with this. We have this problem, how are we going to solve it? We need to lower taxes considerably in this entire state. We've got to drive the most socialist mentality that the politicians have come up with. Socialism. I, I come from Greece. 
We've had it. You see, we were, we were broke for 10 years because of socialism. We were giving everybody money. Christmas started, Christmas bonuses doubled. Easter doubled. You, where was the money coming from? The same thing here. You're talking about all these poor people. You can't get taxes from them. So what do you do to New York? You, you create even more stringent rent regulations. So those of us who are able to pay the taxes, because when my wife goes to City Hall to pay taxes, she sees all the elderly there. Can I pay a little now and maybe a little later? And, and you know, they're crying and whatnot. Government's not helping anyone. And these, these statistics are, are pointless because they don't need to help. And they don't need to solving the problem. We've got to get to the pro solving problems once again. And that's where politics, all of us are going to get fed up. Yeah. Even, the, even the poor are going to realize all these new laws yeah. not going to help them one bit because they've been tried before. History shows us nowhere does socialism work. You've got to have a little capital in the system. Someone has to produce something. <laughs> now, I'm an immigrant kid that slept on three chairs for five years because we had no money. So I'm not talking about with a silver spoon in my mouth to begin with. So, you know, we work hard, we get to where we have to go if we want to get there. But not all of us want to go there. But anyway, I'll leave it at that. But you got to come up with some solutions, you know, instead of yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, here we are. Here. I just want to say one thing. I saw all your statistics and all the money that you're going to spend in to all these new programs. But I don't see that any one of them is helping the people of today. We have the foreclosures today. We have the homelessness today. Those monies are not going to help. What is the county going to do for the people in Westchester today and now? I don't want to think about five years from now. I don't want to be homeless for five years. I don't see any of those solutions to an, a present day resolution to help the people of our county. And I'm really disappointed in that. I really am. Right. I, I will tell you this, the eviction of the eviction and foreclosure of fresh money is there, to, is there today. It's there to help people so they don't lose their home and they don't get in the system. Uh, all right. I don't want that problem. Oh, two percent. How many do you remember Mitchell Long? Or Mitchell Long? And some of them I started my career in managing Mitchell Long housing in the Dallas. How dead is that concept in terms of getting multiple dwellings built? I don't know that you'd be able to see the numbers that you're looking to do by building individual houses. Oh. I achieve them by multiple dwellings, midwives. How dead is the concept of the Chalop, you know, state level, of course you can't be city, but state of Chalop, question. The state has, has, has been putting a lot of money toward the construction toward affordable housing, but it's generally through the low-income housing tax credit program. All right, through New York State Housing Finance Agency, through the Housing Trust Fund. So New York State has definitely been an active partner in terms of building new construction. But those programs only work when you're talking about 50 units or more. How many of these colleagues in Westchester want to see 50 units at one time get built and in one concentration? So that does create a dilemma right then and there. All right, how, how much, how many of our municipalities have the infrastructure to support 50 units in one place? All right, even, even New Rochelle, where you've been trying to build, New Rochelle has recognized that they have a serious issue with sewer capacity and water capacity. They've got to do significant upgrades right now because they've approved all this development. So again, we're working with them right now. I want to give them a permit for that. <laughs> they need permits too, don't worry. I don't see you, go ahead. I think part of the problem too is that the municipalities really don't want to do what you want to do. The zoning codes, their approval processes, the cost of getting anything approved is so prohibitive that there's no way you can build affordable housing and you can't build it in our lifetime. And so unless the county is in a position to dictate to some of these municipalities how they're going to deal with the approval process, you're up against the third wall. 
and as you know, we have no control over the county code of local municipalities. Well, we do make recommendations on the referrals. Could the county do a template for like a permit, a building permit, so it's the same across the board? <laughs> that's actually not a bad that's a suggestion. Idea. Not a bad idea. Uh, that's what, that's what other towns do. Yeah, no, I like that idea. You go to Dallas, and then the county runs the runs the building. Oh, now we know. Even in yeah. even in New York State, Nassau County is on the side. Come on here. We've got forty three municipalities, forty three fire departments, forty three fire departments. Yeah. Just pick up the phone and call nine one one for an emergency. Right. And you, the guy's going to say, what, what county are you in? Uh, is it New Rochelle? Is it Scarsdale? Because i got to know what's wrong with this. i got to show up with Chambliss. I hear you. That's Talking about the the highest 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 government, you know, county. getting in the way of, of, of things like affordable housing. A lot of us here are the people who provide affordable housing. And we recently had a new uh, rent law passed. Yeah. And, uh, and one of the aspects of it uh, basically, or a couple of them, uh, discourage you know, in a big way the investment in, in affordable housing. And, uh, the investment in the existing market rate housing. That's right. And, Seriously, and, and, I, I, I saw that. Like, right. And, and, and so we're, you're going to be in a situation where some of these low rent departments are going to come up and the finances just don't work based on what's in the law. Right. And they're just going to disappear, and so the number of affordable housing units is going to decline. And then, if it continues over a long period of time with this lack of investment, you're going to have things like fires. Uh, you know, where if you have leaks, you have water and electricity doesn't match, doesn't doesn't go together. Uh, you're going to lose big units and uh, tragedies. Uh, and uh, that situation where I don't know. And you could say we didn't do it, the state did it, but people, <laughs> people may you ask know about, about, about that. But I'd like in this kind of a, a presentation of affordable housing, basically, you got to stop the, the spigot from you know the, the disappearing at the bottom. The fact is, there are a lot of buildings here, old buildings, that have good bones and they just need a little tender care, systems have to be upgraded, or you have a situation like you have with the New York City Housing Authority where they have $34 billion right. dollars of, of, of infrastructure that has not been built over a long period of time. So I don't know if anybody ever asked you uh, whether that's going to help you provide affordable housing. I think you know what... Oh, no, I know. When we were in those rental laws, that's the first thing we did was Organize the training so the municipalities would understand what that meant. Yes. Because until the municipalities understand the burden that you're now under, how can they enforce property code? Oh, because you can't invest in the property, but even though the stream just isn't helping them. Right. You, we truly have it. Okay. Yeah, and, and you, could, you couldn't rent some of these apartments because they wouldn't satisfy. Somebody would go to the building department and say this is substantial. That's why I think I was surprised how many easy payments were. Because I expected to see more warehousing. The fact honestly. is, those numbers also, we, we look at numbers every year. And they say there are 25,000 in Westchester, right. and that's now 34. 10,000 units, I mean, that's like a big difference. Thank you. Because I, when I saw that number, I was like, there's no way. Somebody's got to so. check the numbers. Okay. Not in the long They did already. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, thank you. Chambers. Hi. I attended one of the community sessions that had been put into the survey. In Melbourne. And what I heard was that the the official definition of affordable is not the definition of affordable on the ground. And that people simply cannot even afford affordable and low-income housing. And even if you build new quote affordable housing, people can't people can't afford it. So what do we do to address that real gap? So what she's talking about is during the course of the under, consultants undertaking the study, we did do a couple public outreach sessions because we wanted to hear what the general public had to say about housing. And so one was done in Mount Vernon at the community college and one was held in Austin. And yeah, the, the, the outcry was even affordable housing is not affordable to many people because we're setting those income limits. I told you at 80%. That's a family that's only earning $93,000 for at, at 83% of the income. There's a lot of families that are 
minimum wage, so we earn a lot less than that. But as the county executive has said repeatedly, for us to go lower, it, it needs even more subsidy. So, and New York State generally wants to stick around 60%, sometimes they'll let you go higher, but sometimes you gotta go lower. So, so, but you don't also want all in one place, all the units to be at one affordability, but you do want some variety even within that structure. So, um, so yeah, there's, there's, there's no question there's need at all levels, there's needs all over the county, um, but unless municipalities want to see more subsidized housing, it, it's going to be really difficult for the county to meet that need as well. We have a question from Eric Eric. Hey, Barbara. Thanks for coming tonight, by the way. Uh, so, this question you know, came about uh, at a committee meeting, and I'm not happy the Murphy Brothers reminded me of a comment that I made. And so, the comment was we want to build affordable housing, public housing. Why don't we use public land to have um, this housing built on? Why are we using private property and having the government buy that from us at whatever they can afford to pay for that housing? Why do we have all this land in the county? Why can't we use some of that to the to needs of the hey, community? That's a good question, and I am prepared to answer that one. So in Westchester County, there's only three county departments that are allowed to own land, parks and apartments which is all parks land. You're not allowed to get rid of parks land unless you replace it, okay? So our Department of Environmental Facilities and all their land has your wastewater treatment plants, okay? Um, or the Department of Public Works, which is the rest of the county land. Okay, no other department in the county is allowed to own land. The county has already gone many times to get all the land that we have, okay, to see what's available. And many of you know this already. If there is a piece of undeveloped land in Westchester, there is generally a reason why that property has not been developed. And so the ability to develop it, steep slopes, wetlands, drainage issues, whatever it is, and no access to, to the roadways, if there's, you know, in the, and unfortunately in the past couple of decades, when there's even been locally, local developers trying to buy or trying to produce a housing in a, the neighbors come up to the municipality, to the state, to whoever, and say, buy that land so it doesn't get developed. And then they put deep restrictions on it, you know, parkland, whatever it is. So generally speaking, there's not a whole lot of public land available. All right, I know in Westchester County, we looked at every site that we have left. I mean, literally, we are down to the fact that inside, anybody knows grasslands? Inside the old bowl, the grasslands is, is, is pretty much all that's left. There's not even in grasslands do we have sites that are available. But, you know, we're, we're working with the developer on the North 60 to see what other potential exists. So, but that's why the county is willing to step up and say, okay, we'll help you buy land, because we don't have land. All right, the land that we, the, the little bits and pieces of land that the county's trying to dispose of right now, you know, it's a little bit of a, of a property right along an edge of the Long Island River property that only Ursula, who's right next door, really can make use of that property. So there's one right next between the Bronx River Parkway and Ferris Avenue and White Plains with the cemetery across the street. You know, there's a gas line that runs through it. There's a reason all this land is not that we have. A little yeah, bit of yeah, So, so wait, hold on, though. There's two major properties right now that are that are waiting to be bought up. And you have United Hospital in Porchester, mm -hmm. and you have the, the College in New Rochelle that they have just long been yeah, they're, 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 they're private park that are yeah. They're not public lands. I guess we look at all the park land and say, wow. Well, actually, why can't we do that? Why can't we do that? Eric, think of what you were able to do. We look at the underutilized parcels that might have parking lots on there and say, why can't we build it? Mm -hmm. All right, our the building that had an office park all the way in the back and the rest of it was really underutilized and was able to create 14 townhouses and replace the office space. So again, if we look at other properties and buildings that had other uses before to see how might we be able to bring new life. We've taken a middle school up and beach club, made it into 120 units of senior housing. We've taken a couple churches now. We took a bank building in Austin. We've taken, we've taken a, um, an old warehouse in Irvington along the waterfront. It's now a library downstairs and it's 20 some odd units of affordable housing above. So we're looking again at, at existing structure, the adaptive reuse of existing buildings because the land is not necessarily available. 
Uh, too bad we can't get that part in there for what we really need it for, which is housing. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of acres throughout the county that's never been touched, that's old growth forest, and I guess that's a state issue. But because it's never been developed, you don't want to know the archaeological review that you have to go through to see what Indians used to be there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Two more questions. Battle of Park City. Crazy, right? The city needed more land, so they filled in it. And they created Battle of Park City. How, is that crazy up here? I know about the environmental issues. I'm just saying, as soon as you can work, how crazy is the idea of building in viable areas? It's crazy. Okay. It depends on the municipality and not what they have to do. They got sea level rise. Yeah, but I'm saying, and the land that we have now, you want to lose the hot or the area around the hot summer. Right, the one on its own. The island, you want to lose land. Even areas in land that are around our reservoirs. What possibility is going up? Right. Going vertical instead of scrolling out. What yeah. is the plan to mark last year? Who the head was this plan to mark? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was given a proposal by someone who wanted to be in the middle of the city of Mount Vernon for 30 stories. And you said, I thought, well, you really said, I don't think so. It's inappropriate for Mount Vernon to offer 30 stories. Whereas, White Pines has 42 stories. Yonkers has 42 stories. Those people would have come with a lot of money and they left. And they were willing to offer 30 stories. You need to build up. You need to allow that. But you gotta make sure you got the appropriate infrastructure in place to support that. So there's also social consequences to building up. Oh, right. Okay? Yeah. So you might you, you could provide more housing, but you might create other issues or problems that the city doesn't want to deal with. Uh, high rise is not exactly the best the best uh, living conditions. You know, I mean, the white plates toward the whole world down. So this is a wonderful conversation, and this is just the start of the conversation, is, is what I want to sort of leave you with. We're going to be coming back to this theme again and again. I want to thank very much the Commissioner for being here.